and welcome to another episode of Digging History and Honoring the Sacrifice. I am James McCormick, your host, and our co-host, uh, Corbett Perkins, is actually out in the field and uh, with his children. So, well, that's a good thing. Anytime you can get a chance to spend it with your kids and your family, absolutely you want to do that. And if you've noticed, I want to talk a little bit about these things I have on my face. These are actually glasses that I have to wear. Now, I know that now, as we start to look at school year starting up, there are probably a lot of you out there that have kids or grandkids or maybe you kids that are watching the show now that you have to wear glasses. Well, let me tell you something. You should never feel bad about you're wearing your glasses or worry about what people are going to say about you because these are designed to help us to see. Now, I know that I'm talking and preaching to the choir to all of you adults that are out there. But just think about it. If I didn't have these on, I couldn't see all those cool artifacts. Now, normally I'll wear contact lenses. And, but today, because um, I know that there's some kids that are out there, especially some that uh, are watching the show right now, uh, or regularly watch the show, that just found out they have to have glasses. And to them, they think it's just the worst thing in the world that could have happened to you. I got news for you. It is not. It is not the worst thing in the world. I want you to put your glasses on and go to school. And the main important thing that you need to remember is, is that you're going there for an education. And you have to be able to see. So don't worry about those things if you have to get glasses. Because sometimes we have to get other things like hearing aids or other devices that help us to be able to navigate through life. So this show is kind of pointed towards a lot of our kids out there that are going through those changes in their life. Now we're also going to talk about two important Civil War battles that occurred here in West Virginia. We're going to talk about um, the Battle of Carnifex Ferry and also the Battle of Kessler's Cross Lanes. We have exclusive access to portions of that battlefield that are uh, private property, and we've been very blessed to develop wonderful relationships with the property owners, and we've been able to under uncover some, some pretty awesome relics and artifacts. So as you're watching the show today and you're seeing the clips from the field, I want you to think about that battle. You know, this occurred in 1861, and you know, at this time, West Virginia was still part of Virginia. There was a lot of upheaval, a lot of things going on between, uh, you know, different states. And, and for those of you that understand history, you know, again, I'm not trying to, to downplay this, but really this show is really focused towards the kids and for those that are watching this show maybe for the first time. So as we go out amongst these battlefields and these areas where we find these wonderful relics and artifacts, we run into some wonderful people. Now, metal detecting is a hobby. It is also a very healthy hobby that gets you out in the wilderness, allows you to meet new people, and it also allows you to experience things like STEM technology, why? Because the metal detector is a device that requires a little bit of skill and a whole lot of, of, of effort to try to find these, these things. Now, it could be anything. Most people think they'd get a metal detector and they find coins and, and they find rings and all these other things. Most of the time, what you find is what some people would classify as junk. A lot of shotgun shells, a lot of pull tabs. But you also find the really cool things, like the Civil War three-ring bullet. You know, that is something that really tells a story. And every time that I dig up a Civil War three-ring bullet, I hold that in my hand, and I realize the last time that someone held that, you know, they were very nervous, very scared, most likely, and they were getting ready to shoot at another person in the great American Civil War. Now, as you look on uh, some of the things that we've done in the past with digging history, you know, we've shown you different sites from all over the state and in some places around the country. We continue to bring that to you because we love this sport, this hobby. 
And that's why I want you to really think about metal detecting and I want you to really think about joining the Appalachian Professional Metal Detectors Association. The Appalachian Professional Metal Detectors Association has been recently formed and it's designed to bring together professional metal detectorists or those that are seeking to learn about metal detecting and relic hunting. And what they will do is, is they will bring the ability for us to be able to gather together, to be able to share locations, and to be able to get permission and also communicate with our legislators in why we should look at ways to enhance this great sport, this great hobby in West Virginia. Do you realize that there are some states that actually have a license for metal detecting. In Florida, for instance, you go down, you get a license for 10 bucks, and you can go out and you can metal detect in certain state parks and state controlled areas that you normally would not get access to. This has been very good for the state of Florida. It increases tourism because every year they have these massive metal detecting uh, association uh, hunts on this public property. So they'll bring together thousands of people from around the country and each one of those people are paying for a one to three day metal detecting licensing fee and that brings money into that state. It also brings in tourism because when they go they stay for generally three or four days. So that's something I really want you all to talk up amongst the legislators and some of you legislators that watch the show regularly and I'm very thankful for all of you that do, uh, to kind of kick that around a little bit and give us a call. You can always reach out to me at James McCormick and, and you can call me at 304-206-6065 and we're going to put up my, e my email address which is wvpurpleheart1863 at gmail.com at the bottom of the page and you reach out to me and we'll discuss some of the finer things that go along with metal detecting and how we can improve tourism in the state of West Virginia. But before we go into the, to the field shots, I just wanted to just once again reemphasize, you know, kids, you're getting ready to go back to school. It's an exciting time. I know that some of you are nervous. Some of you have had changes in your life. You have, some of you haven't been to school for a while. Remember to take all the safety precautions. Listen to your teachers and study and study real hard. And if you got to wear glasses, hey, do like old James does here on Digging History. Put them on your face and don't worry about what anybody thinks. Just get out so you can see better and you can experience life. Okay, so I know everybody's excited to see all of our great finds from the field. Again, Today's search is going to be focused in Kessler's Cross Lanes and in the Carnifex Ferry uh, Battlefield area. And we found some pretty cool stuff with our friends Byron Tucker, Corbett Perkins, and, and many others that were able to, uh, to come along with us. So, sit back, enjoy the show, and we'll be right back. All right, we got uh, Byron Tucker on here. And uh, we're out here digging near the site of Kessler's Cross Lanes, a Civil War battle. We were on private property, got permission to hunt. We've doubled permission. <laughs> we go out, we ask, and then we make sure they know. Double, double check. We always double check because if you don't, sometimes you might get surprised. So we're going to try a different technique out here. It's a small field, relatively small field. So we're going to go in like an L shape. So Byron is going to head this way. I'm going to head that way, and then we're going to circle this field, and then we're going to just make going in opposite directions. We're going to make full circles around this field until we detect the whole thing, and then we'll let you know if we find anything. Now, Corbett and, uh, and your son's out here behind us. Now, we can't let them find more, more than stuff. us. Yeah. We're just, we're just we're <laughs> yeah. telling Byron. Yeah, it can't happen. It can't happen, and it can happen if you're setting your hind end on the couch. Now, Corbett's been on the couch quite a bit lately, but now we finally got him out, so we're not going to ride him too hard unless he doesn't find anything. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's out of practice. He's he got to be retrained. He's got to be retrained. It's like having a brand-new uh, boot. 
a, ba- yeah. a brand new private or in your uh, navy would be a seaman, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's he's just he's just brand new all over again. So we're going to have to train him up. God be with us when we do this. It's going to be a hot day today, but keep watching on digging history. Byron, got anything you want to tell everybody? I can't find it sitting on the couch. Let's get out and let's get it. Okay, folks. First find possibly could be Civil War. It's an old horseshoe. Um, I like finding horse. Got a lot of horseshoes. So put this in the pocket, carry it down here. I'll cover up my hole. It was underneath that rock right there. So he gave out a screaming signal. Um, so I knew it was iron. Just didn't know what kind of iron that it was. Well, now I know. It's a horseshoe. And horseshoes are cool. We'll try to link back up with Byron over there in just a minute. We're kind of working this area. It's a new area. Um, we think that there was an encampment of Union soldiers, possibly Confederates here. Maybe both at some point in time. I don't know. But that horseshoe is a good, good first find. So, all right, folks, keep watching on Digging History. Okay, folks, found the first three ringer of the day. There it is. Now, this was a Confederate campsite right here. Of course, troops marched all up and down this area. So this could have been a Confederate drop bullet, or it could have been Union. But, for sure, it's here. That's awesome. All right. All right, trying to figure out what we got down here. It's down there fairly deep. Just kind of going all over the place. All right. Dug me on a spot here. It's a little bit easier to dig now because uh, it rained last night. So, you know, we're in July. So, don't expect no easy digging out here. You gotta watch. Yeah, I like to lay a little bit of dirt down here too, because we do have snakes down here, lots of them. Uh, poisonous snakes, copperheads, uh, rattlesnakes, they're all out here, okay? And, uh, you know, they've got the advantage on us. You know, I don't know where that thing went. Sometimes that happens. I found a little button just a few minutes ago. Um, so, It's showing it's like right in here. Uh, and it's, it's kind of fluctuating a little bit. So which leads me to believe that it's probably junk, but some of the little buttons that I have found, gotta be real careful, and I'm trying to be. Believe me, I don't wanna tear up no artifacts. Uh, Let's see if I can get to it with my pinpointer now. Golly nits. So I'm using my Nocta Micro Simplex. And, uh, and it's doing a really good job. Um, if you see what I'm doing here, I'm just kind of... Just feeling this thing out. So this this is what takes the time out here. So you know you got to be a little dedicated to this, and uh, you know you're going to have to deal with the outdoor elements and getting dirty and all that stuff. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. Oh boy, I don't like the snakes. I don't mind the. The non-venomous snakes don't bother me at all. Black snakes, garter snakes, that boy, those copperheads and, and rattlesnakes, they sure do. And uh, like I said, you're in their territory and 
just gotta be careful. I, I dig dirt out and I All right, we gotta get this thing going. Wow. Sometimes that happens. Uh, sometimes you just get a high. Yeah, I think that's what that is. Sometimes you get a high mineral content and look how easy this is to fill this hole up, folks. It's not hard. It's, I don't know why people can't fill up their holes. Anyways, didn't find anything. So sometimes that happens. Don't get discouraged. <sighs> Tighten up your rucksack and, and get moving. Go on to the next spot. I mean, literally, I could be standing on a bullet right now and I wouldn't know it unless I run my machine over it and pick it up. So that's how it rolls in digging history. We think we've discovered a, a pretty good little tidbit of history here. Uh, and that would be the initial engagement of Company K of the 7th Ohio Volunteer Infantry with the Confederates. And we're starting to find a lot of bullets and stuff on this hillside. Mainly fired from behind us, which would have been the position they probably had an outpost there or a campsite. Found a couple of bullets, found a, a button from a pair of uh, trousers, Civil War era. So what we're doing is, is, is Byron's going this way and I'm going that way, you see? You see he's up on that high side of the hill and I'm going that way and we're just kind of zigzagging this hill so we can really hit it hard because we're not just trying to find artifacts here, we're trying to tell a story of history. Now, I think we found enough bullets to say that something happened here. Possibly the initial engagement, maybe a little skirmish that uh, is not mentioned anywhere, <clears throat> but we found the bullets to prove that something went on here. So we'll get back with you and we'll get me a drink of water and uh, get right back on it. Okay, folks, this is a trouser button off of some pants here. You can almost see the holes in the middle, but that's exactly what that is. I was looking to see, at first I thought it was a flat button. Um, I'll clean it up later, but that's what that is. That's a button. So we're in the right area. I think this was a campsite and it looks like a good place for a camp. I'm seeing rocks and formations, found a piece of lead, uh, found one fired Williams uh, three ring bullet. And uh, this looks like a good place to defend close to water, reverse side of the slope, road down here, creek over there. That's nice. All right, folks, keep watching on Digging History. We're out here digging today uh, on private property near the Battle of Kessler's Cross Lanes. We think that this was one of the campsites for one of the Ohio units, but it could have very well been a Confederate or a Union campsite. One button, a few bullets, that doesn't really uh, determine that, but we're going in the right direction. I think this is, I think we're gonna be finding more stuff in this area right here um, as we get into this, where this kind of comes around. Um, looks like a good area. All right, Byron, we're out here on some private property you've secured. And uh, well, it's near the Battle of uh, Kessler's Cross Lanes. So a lot of troops went through this area. Now we found some bullets today. Found a lot of shotgun shells, a lot of junk. I think I've made my record on my shotgun shells for today. I think I did too. I think I got 157. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. At, at least 50, I would yeah. say. You know, I, I, I could be off by one or two, but Anyways, but you found some cool stuff there. Well, I've got a piece of lead. I bet money that one's Civil War related. Oh, God, yeah. That one we'll have to clean up. It uh, is a small one. It could be a pistol uh -huh. bullet. And there's a real interesting little piece that may be a piece of gold. I'm not sure. That's the way it come out of the ground. Uh -huh. 
and most anything else, if it was brass, it looked, ought to look green. Yeah, yeah, it would but, look green uh, if it's brass come out of there nice and shiny. But uh, I'm thinking it might be a little piece of gold. That would be nice. But I, uh, I hope that it is. Yeah, yeah, because you can't find this stuff sitting on the couch. No, where's Corbett at? Is he around? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know where he's at today. <laughs> so what, what do you know about this little battle out here? Well, there, there was... The Battle of Knives and Forks at Zor Baptist Church, and that uh, there was Union soldiers at the church, mm -hmm. and the Confederates were, they had a, a, a defensive area out of Carnifax Ferry, mm -hmm. and this area that where we're at is where the records say that they bivouacked the night before they attacked Zor mm -hmm. Baptist Church, and I believe that was August the 25th, 1861, and from mm -hmm. what I've read, they wouldn't allow the soldiers to build fires or anything, of course, the night before. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't let them, uh, and it was raining. I read one report, so here these soldiers were waiting to attack the church the next morning, standing around or sitting around in the rain. And I'm uh -huh. sure they didn't have tents, they didn't have sleeping bags. They probably left Carnifax, came to here to get closer to be ready for the battle, and only brought the bare necessities. I bet they, I bet they was had was a rough night for them. It would have been a long, miserable night. Well, we're going to get back to digging, so uh, you know I think that uh, we're doing pretty good. This potentially could have been a location where Company K of the Seventh Ohio uh, first met action, uh, because we found the bullets that I think it's safe to say there was some action that was yeah, here. Yeah. We found enough. Uh, it's not. We can't find anything on a map, so it's really cool when we find new locations that could potentially be a historical discovery. Well, the maps, are, I think, are always good for guidelines, give us general ideas mm -hmm. that, that how accurate they are or were. Right. They were as accurate as they could make them with what they had at the time. Yeah. But in the heat of battle, I'm sure that uh, some accuracy is lost. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're right. Well, let's get back to digging, man. Yep. Well, I really hope that you enjoyed those great videos from the field. Isn't it cool to be able to get out amongst the woods and in the fields with all of your good friends and find so many wonderful things? And hey, what do you think about the ability for me to be able to see with my glasses? That is even so much better. Folks, at Digging History and Honoring the Sacrifice, we have taken metal detecting, the love of metal detecting. We have also worked with veterans and children. People of all ages can really take an opportunity and enjoy this wonderful hobby. You know, you don't need to spend a lot of money on a machine. You just have to get a machine and become proficient on it. And that comes from practice. Yes, you're going to find a lot of tin cans. Yes, you're going to find a lot of junk out there. Dig it up, put it in your pouch, fill in your holes, remember that, and then just take it as a lesson. You know, a lot of people will go and they collect all of that metal that they dig up. I know a lot of people that do this. They collect the iron, they collect everything that they dig up, and they take it home with them, and they put it in buckets, and they separate it, and they clean it up the best they can, and they, sac or they, uh, and, and they sacrifice their time to do that, but then they go and recycle it and make a little bit of money at the end of the year. For us, and me in particular and my children, we go out and if we find a penny, a nickel, could be old, could be new, but that money that is classified as new money, you know, anything, you know, uh, you know not older than 19 and, and 59, we put it in a bank, a little piggy bank, and we call it our fun money jar. And do you know that every month, every month from our collective uh, metal detecting where we go to parks and different places, we've, we've always come up with at least $30. $30, you think about that. That doesn't sound like a lot of money, but $30 in change every month over the course of the year, well, you know, what's that? That's $360 a year. Now, what could you do with $360 a year? 
I know some of you younger folks out there, you could put that in a savings account and you can start doing something really good with that. In addition, if you're out there digging up trash, you're getting rid of things that are, that are harmful to the environment, you know, uh, and you're recycling it, you're doing a great service to not only the community that you live in, but to our wonderful state and the area that you're metal detecting in. Just think about it, folks. It's more than just a hobby. It's more than just going out and finding that gold coin or that ring or those Civil War artifacts. It's about actually enhancing and improving your health, your vitality, by getting out, moving around amongst nature, and also improving the community in which you're doing this in. Because in addition to digging up these, these items, whether they be trash or whether they be artifacts that can go on display in the local museums, you're also moving the soil. You're aerating the soil when you do that. That's why we say it's so important to fill your holes. You dig the hole, you fill it back up you cover it back up completely. You're creating a little bit of aeration in that soil. A lot of times folks don't realize this, but, but they do that in people's yards all the time and it helps with the absorption of water so that the grass is actually even better. So there's a lot of benefits to metal detecting. It would be great if we could come up with a way here in West Virginia to open up our state forests and our state parks two metal detectorists with a license who have been trained to go out. They'll not only clean up a lot of that trash and debris that's out there, but they'll also improve the overall soil quality and help to put some pretty cool artifacts in some of your local museums, especially in some of these parks and these areas that have libraries or waiting areas that would be really, really cool to see some of these things that have been buried in the ground for hundreds of years. So remember, look at and consider joining us in the Appalachian Professional Metal Detectors Association. And also reach out to me anytime you have a question about metal detecting or life in general as it relates to relic hunting. I would be happy to assist you any way that I can. And also, if any of you out there shoot some video from the field, send us some links to that so that we can share some of that on the show. Now, we'll ask for you to sign a release statement, but that's a small thing to do. But we would love to be able to air some of those wonderful, uh, you know, things from the events from the field from some of you viewers out there that just love and enjoy the show as much as you do. We're thankful for each and every one of you. And remember, folks, that a day out digging beats a day on the couch anytime. So get up, get to digging, and have a blessed and wonderful day. Thank you for watching Digging History.